Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel, Sonic Love! So in today's video, I'm going to be showing off and opening and unboxing the new Retroid Pocket Flip. Really excited about this one. If you take a look, you can see that it comes in five different variants. We have the limited edition red, we have the black, we have the 16-bit US. I really do wish they did a European version with the yellow, red, green, blue buttons. It would have been nice. The indigo, which is the one that I have here now, and also the watermelon. I've bought watermelon, indigo, and 16-bit US. They haven't arrived yet. One, I'll be doing a giveaway for hitting 13,000 subscribers. Or was it 12,000? I can't remember. Either way, I will be doing a giveaway. So I've been really, really excited about this one with the showcase video. I do love clamshell designs. I do love my 3DS. Cannot wait to open this little beauty and show it off. Let's check it out. Okay, so the box itself is pretty standard. It is a cardboard box, if that makes any sense. So it's quite thick. It really has a nice premium feel. It does have a magnet open and shut, which is also very nice and stylish. It doesn't open fully. Inside we have our flip. Up on the other side we have our charging cable. And what else do we have underneath the hood? And an empty box. So pretty much bare bones inside cable goes over there it is a lot smaller than what i expected straight away i can feel those linear triggers analog triggers nice oh i really do like okay so it's a, it's chunky it's definitely chunky but first impressions i really like it i like the feel it's a very, very smooth plastic. Nice texture. Is it a finger magnet? I don't think it is. I think it's just heat. As you can see, it dissipates the oils. So that's not too bad. Okay. It's very smudgy though. Hmm. Okay, comes with a nice retro pocket logo facing the opposite way. So when it's open, people can see that it's from a Retroid. On the top, we have a power source. We also have a mini HDMI out. We have, I think, M2, M1. I think these are programmable buttons that you can use as additional buttons when using key mapping. We have the usual triggers, but this time around for the R2 and R1, they are analog and they've got a nice feel to them actually. When you press it, it's stiff, so it's got a good bit of feedback. I really am a big fan of analog triggers. Very clicky. R1 and R2 are very clicky. They are quite loud. So underneath we have two speakers. They're facing downwards. And they seem to be really, really close, so I'm not too sure how I'm going to feel about that because I normally have it where my fingers are underneath. So I might actually, they might be in a position where my fingers lie, actually. And not only that, but with them facing down and being so close together, you're not really going to get that richness of stereo sound, I don't think. So we have this exhaust on the back, and we also have a air intake port, I think for the cooling solution that's inside. We have a start button, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have a TF card slot. If we open it up, I don't have any nails, sadly. There we go. This is not gonna come preloaded with ROMs or anything like that, sadly guys, you will have to add your own and it is Android. We have a volume on the side, not very loud, that's pretty cool. Moment of truth as we open it up, flip it as they say. That looks really, really nice. I like 
that. I like that a lot. But there is a massive gap. I know a lot of people did want to see a second screen. Um, but to be honest, now seeing it in the hand and how compact it is, and it is actually quite small. Um, okay, so it comes with a start select bang virtually in the middle that feel nice. Don't know if you can see. Good news is the D-pad is not level with the unit itself, like the X18. So there is a huge gap. So it pivots really, really nice. So hopefully you'll be able to pull off the moves like a master in fighting games. Yep, that actually feels really, really good. I was a bit worried about that, but that's fine. Buttons are quite small, but they feel nice. Um, yeah, they're quite... Yeah, everything seems to be level with the analogs. So we have whole stick. So these are magnetic. They have a nice resistance to them when you're moving them around. But again, they're still sliders and I'm not a big fan. I would have really preferred to have maybe them sunk in and recessed a bit more uh, and just have the low level switch analogs. But hey ho, it is what it is. And I very rarely use them anyway. But so far, I am really digging this. I will leave some specs right here. So you can see what's inside this lovely little beauty. But yeah, I think it looks really, really nice. As a first impression, I think it looks kind of cool and smooth and sleek. So the screen itself is not set right on it. I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of concaved. So that's pretty cool. But so far, my first impressions are quite nice. It does feel really comfortable in the hands. So my fingers tend to go point downwards diagonally. So as you're on the corners here, it just fits really, really nice. So yeah, that feels really nice actually, really, really comfortable. Yeah, I'd love to know what you think of it guys. What colour would you go for? Do you like the indigo? I absolutely love it. Just so reminiscent of the GameCube. And I'm really looking forward to playing some GameCube games on here. Now, personally, I wouldn't get this for PS2 or the higher end systems. You can play a light selected amount of games, PS2 wise, GameCube, even some light Wii games. But predominantly, you're just going to get some really good performance with Dreamcast and PSP, Sega Saturn, and loads of cool Android-based games. You'll have no issues with whatsoever. But yeah, I really, really like it. They do have clickable, I don't know if you can hear it or see it actually move in, but there's not that much movement. It does take a bit of pressure to click them in. I don't know what it would be like when you're Right. I don't know how that is, but when they're in the center, they're clickable. But I'm not too sure if they're clickable once moved over. Maybe they are. I'll have to find out. It does seem to click, but then when you're over the far edge, it doesn't click anymore. But it does move. Interesting. Okay, so what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go off camera. I'm probably going to mess around, play with it, add some stuff. Because obviously, with it being Android, I'll have to add games and also a tf card put some roms on there just so we can test out the emulators so yeah i will see you shortly okay guys so i've been messing around with this for a good few days i got this on thursday and i think i'll be doing this video maybe on sunday early or late evening so yeah it's really nice the screen the screen is absolutely lovely i can't stress enough how nice it is hopefully it's coming across okay on camera but it's got some really nice viewing angles a bit reflective but really really nice really rich deep blacks and also very very vibrant colors it looks really really cool 
So I've been messing around with it. The D-pad is absolutely okay. I love the D-pad. It's uh, I've had no issues with fighting games, which I'll showcase in some emulation gameplay. I have a mixed feeling about this because with it being so straight and the, because we're using the triggers a lot more uh, in games, that I'm finding that it is a bit cramped on my hands and it it like kind of aches my hands a little bit and um, because it's so small it really is compact so let me just give you a showcase of just how small this actually is this is the myu mini plus so it's not that much bigger than a myu mini plus so it really is quite small in comparison and then if we get say a larger handheld as in the retro pocket 3 plus you can see that when you're holding the Retro Pocket 3 Plus, um, it just feels really, really nice. And your elbows aren't tucked in so much. And your wrists itself aren't bending uh, outwards like this. So if that's how you can see it. But then obviously when you're playing this, you can have your elbows there, which then puts less strain on your wrist and actual hand itself. But apart from those little gripes, yeah, everything else fine. The buttons were perfect. The analog sticks, in some games, they work really well. Like Genshin Impact, I liked it in that. Call of Duty, most Android-based games, they're really good. But for some reason, and I'm not too sure whether it's something to do with the optimization of the mapping of these whole sticks, that sometimes I can press fully right and it doesn't even input at all. Like there, there, there was just nothing, no movement, no nothing. But then if I slowly moved it and then moved it over a little bit, it's like your movements are too quick. It doesn't actually respond. And I'm, I'm not too sure what's going on there. Maybe with a, a future update uh, that will be changed. But they're the only gripes that I have is these analogs. Yes, it's nice to have decent sliders in there so to speak, but I still think I would have preferred the generic Switch style analogs on there because, because it just makes for a better gaming experience, in my opinion. But still, it's, I wouldn't say it's a big gripe. They still work perfectly okay. But I did notice that there's something that needs to be done with the update of sometimes not picking up the directional move. Uh, especially on android based games but that might be just a compatibility issue as i say the analog triggers themselves are fantastic i changed them for sega saturn so i could have the analog and have you know when you're accelerating you can really really use racing games to their full potential even on ps1 racing games it's just so nice to have that um console experience uh, on a handheld which is pretty cool. So yeah, my overall first impression is that this is really, really, really nice. Just a few things really. One, it I think it's a bit too small. I do think the ergonomics um, hinder it a bit at this size. As I say, causing pain to my hands and also my wrists uh, for long periods of play. I say I've been playing on this now for like three, four days now. So it's pretty cool. The build quality itself is really solid. The hinge itself, I don't think you're going to have any issues with it, to be honest. It, it's quite durable. Obviously, a, a long press or a firm press at full extension will snap it, like, because it's plastic. But still, it's quite robust. It's really nice for the size, for pocketability and taking it with you on the go. I think that maybe this is the reason why they did choose this type of diameters and size is just to make it as po as pocketable as possible. One thing that I did notice this new type of heat sink or whatever they have in there, um, this thing gets really warm, like uh, like incredibly warm. Um, I did think it was going to melt the plastic at some point when I was highly stressing it with uh, higher end uh, emulation and also Android games. I was playing Alien Isolation for a little while, then I moved on to Grid. And then I moved on to Monster Hunter and I must have been playing for about three hours in total. And this thing got pretty toasty. So, yeah, when you change the fan from performance to smart and then off like smart, it's not very loud. You can hardly hear it. I will try and see if we can get it to work now. So... 
like that's the loudest it will get but there doesn't seem to be much air coming out of the back end and you can't really feel anything being sucked in this end so i don't know if it's my unit but yeah it is the job it's it, it's intended to do it's not really doing so i don't really understand why that's in there and why they're raving on about it because i'm not seeing any differences whatsoever so let's get into some emulation i know you've probably seen everything about it but this is my first impressions so one thing i do really like about the uh, retroid pockets and what they have done with all their retroid systems that they have done so far is how easy it is to make um easy to put all your roms in one place and then obviously we can just test as many games as possible and also make sure that the front end that they have is as easy to set up as possible as you can see we have a list of all the systems very easy and straightforward to set up once you have your roms it's just a simple case of hitting setup then adding the rom path and then it literally scrapes all the box art for you which is really really nice Ending in, obviously, when you go to go into a system. So if we go into FBA, as you'll see, we have a list of all the ROMs. And then as you scroll down, they it just scrapes the box off for you, which is something that's really, really nice and easy and straightforward to set up. You'll see there we have the fan set to performance. If we tap it again, we have smart. And then if we tap it again, it will just go to fan itself. I tend to keep it on performance. Some cool things that I've never really done before. So I today, I literally uh, wanted to check out the ability to do some digital art. Now, with it being a touchscreen, you do have the ability to use any drawing type of program. So if I just showcase this, this was a little sketch I did of a little baby Sonic. But it was just cool to see that you can have the ability to do some digital art. Now the screen with the size the way it is, it still is quite easy. So all the key fun uh, functionality works. So color picking, choosing the artworks, uh, choosing all the options are at a really, really good level. So the screen uh, lets you do that to so say, for instance, if I wanted a color pick, we just go to color pick, use this little tool here, set it on what color that you want, and then just simply paint away. So even if you wanted to choose different color, uh, painting brushes themselves, they're all very easy to see and use. So if you're into digital art, um, <laughs> it was just really, really nice to paint a image, uh, simply just using it with my finger. Um, and, it, and you can still zoom in pretty much where you want to uh, and still have the ability to go over. So if I just show you now, obviously I don't want that to be like that on the shoe. So I'd simply just color pick. choose what color I want and then simply just go over but as you can see even just using my finger if you have got a nice little stylist you could use that it will probably be better than using your finger but as you can see it is really easy just to pick up and use it's got great zoom facilities and as I say it's just something that I wanted to show off so I thought that was pretty cool so I did this today and it took a couple of hours but it was just really nice and because it's a clamshell you can hold it with your hand here and then just use this and it's just really really nice so i thought that was just a cool feature i wanted to show off and let's jump into some native android gaming so i'm going to kick things off with some grid on android and it looks really nice
So as you can see, if I slowly press on the analog, right trigger, you can hear the way it's very nice and feels great. The actual analogs themselves are not bad in racing games, in all fairness, but still, I'm not a big fan. But if you're a fan of driving games, this is not a bad shout, guys. Um, it really is nice. Moving on to some Alien Isolation. Another game that's really nice on Android to play on the Retro Pocket Flip. Again, what a game and it plays really, really nice. Just let me move up and just show you a little bit of how it moves. So forward, back, left, right. Then look around. So it's not too bad. In some Android games, it feels really nice. Like on here, you've got great control. I'd say Alien Isolation and i'd say grid are the best at the whole stick uh, whole analog sliders um like they're really good and i've had no issues and it feels nice and plays really nice where other games um like genshin impact not too sure whether it's because it's the lag itself in the game but as i say just inputs are really working very well but on here it's perfectly fine it's quite strange so talking about genshin impact let's move into genshin impact another great feature is the key mapping inside of the os itself which is really really nice if you slide it over you'll see that we have key mapping once you press it it gives you the ability to use these prompts at the top to set where, uh, the key actions that you want to use um, on the Android side. As you can see, I've set them all up, but it's really, really nice. And the great thing is that if you click on the right for the analog, it gives you plenty of different options. And as you can see now, we've got a just viewer mode. Uh, I've put it down to the X axis and Y axis, down to the lowest as it, it can possibly be. Uh, I do that just in order to make sure that the sensitivity isn't too strong and then as you know if you've played anything else with key mapping it doesn't give you the ability to use it as a second analog to look around it will stutter and it will just look really really bad but with this action you can then just use it like a regular right analog stick 
which is really nice and comes in handy for when you're targeting in FPS games or when you're using to view around the area. So Genshin Impact, really cool game. Um, just wanted to show off that with the triggers. So if I hold in and then I can use around, it's very easy to then target and look around without any hiccups, which is really nice. But as I say, you can see I'm pushing and there is no movement. Can you see that? So I'm not too sure what's going on there. A normal pad, if you flick and you use that, uh, if I go slowly and use it as a 360, then it works and still stutters a little bit. So I'm not too sure if it's just the compatibility with the game, but any stronger movements, even when I put the sensitivity up and change the um, radius of it, this still happens so i know it's got nothing to do with that so yeah but if i use a very very small amount of pressure then it works so the l3 and r3 when you press them in they work so if i go to click anything and even if you're running and using it it still works also so it was something that i was a little bit worried about but Genshin Impact, low settings, runs really, really well, and it looks absolutely fantastic on here. So if you're a mega fan of this game, you'll have no issues playing it on the Retro Pocket Flip. It's really nice. So Call of Duty is another one that is really nice to play on. But as you can see, it looks really nice and plays really nice. So if you're a fan of Call of Duty, you'll do really well. So moving on to your 8-bit and 16-bit. Um, they, they're all going to run great. Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. They're all going to look and play amazing here on the Retro Pocket Flip. I say the D-pad, uh, no issues whatsoever. It does feel a little bit loose. Um, I do like a little bit, maybe a tad firmer. But uh, I don't think it hinders the gaming experience at all. Uh, and the inputs seem to be all fine diagonal as well. So yeah, it's a really nice D-pad. Arcade games uh, play really, really well. You're not going to have any issues with the D-pad or the uh, um, hole stick sliders. And they all work fine. Pull out the moves very, very easy.
So let's move it up a notch and take it to GameCube. Now, I personally wouldn't buy these units for with this chipset, literally for GameCube or PS2 or Wii, because it's just a bonus that you have games that can play full speed. Like we have Mario Strikers here, plays at full speed uh, and looks really, really nice. There is a bit of tinkering to do uh, along the way, whether it, be, it needs to be done through uh, emulated clock speed or whether it needs to be done by changing the Vulcan or OpenGL. So there is a little bit of messing around to get the games to run perfect. But nonetheless, there is still plenty of games that play really, really nice on here. So your lower end stuff, um, like Mario, will work really, really well, as you've just seen. But also we have Wind Waker that also plays really decently on here as well. And it really is a case of just trial and error and seeing what games work really, really well for GameCube. But I think I've got about... 15 games that I, I like to play uh, and they all run fine on here so that's really really good. It's quite fitting in this colour uh, to see it. it's really nostalgic. Also with Wii games it is again trial and error. Same with PS2. But here's Tatanoko versus Capcom. Okay guys, I'm going to leave it there for my first impressions and look of the Retro Pocket Flip. I really, really like it. Um, there is 
a few things that I do think that you should take into consideration. One is the unit itself, it can get uncomfortable over a long period of time. If that's something that you have uh, concerns over, then, then yeah, it, it's something to consider. I do get sore wrists and also um, sore hands using it. Don't mind them and I think they're okay. And I think it's the best if you're gonna use these sliders. I think they're the best sliders that you could probably possibly get for a unit. But again, I'm not a big fan. I'm, I'm really thinking that I'm massively let down by them. They, they've really spoiled it for me, in my opinion. Yes, they're great to use and they're actually okay when you're playing the games. But again, after a while of using them, you're just thinking, I wish I had analog. So that really puts a massive hindrance uh, in playing on this. If you're using it for the D-pad, the D-pad is great. I think it's really, really nice. The analog triggers or linear triggers are fantastic. They are absolutely incredible. The screen itself is lovely. It's really, really nice and sharp and the viewing angles are fantastic. My overall experience and first impressions is it's great uh, if you're looking for a clamshell handheld, but if you're looking for a regular shaped handheld, then I think the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus may be a better option and a shout for you. So the trade-off is do you want analog triggers? Do you want a clamshell design? That is the question really for it. The actual fan itself, it doesn't do anything, I'm sorry, but nothing's coming out the back. And just from the testing here, um, it's really, really warm. Like, I don't, know, I don't know how to explain it. The only thing that you'd be able to do if you had some type of instrument to actually see whether it is actually keeping it cool. But if it was keeping it cool, then the system itself would be cool, but it's not, it gets really toasty. And as I say, for something that is supposed to eject heat i'm not really feeling anything coming out of this exhaust um if there's supposed to be like i can feel the heat but i can't feel the pressure of the heat coming out so i'm not too sure what's going on um even the metal on here is warm so yeah i'm not really too sure what's going on there the overall size i really really like and uh, I, I say i've been using this for a few days now and i put it in my pocket and i traveled around with it it's really really comfortable to take on the travels so that is great. We all know chip wise, so it's a great chip set. So I don't know. I've, I'm, I've, I'm so torn and mixed. I think the design is beautiful. I think it looks great. I love clamshells. Could it be better? I think so. Do I think it's the best clamshell that you can that money can buy so far? Without a shadow of a doubt, this is the best that is out there at the moment. But that doesn't mean somebody can't come along and make a better one. Love to know what you think of the flip. Hope you enjoyed the video. If there's anything else that you wish to see running on it, if you want me to do some long play emulation, uh, in case you haven't seen what's capable of this chipset, then let me know. As I say, I will be giving one of these away. Uh, when it arrives, I'll do another video doing that. I'll do like a, a draw at the end of the month or something like that. Um, so you guys can get your hands on one of these as well. It will be the watermelon. That will be the one that I'll be giving away. Uh, as a giveaway for the subscribers but yeah I, I, i'm so torn between it i want to love it more than what i do but as i say those things are just keeping it back for me i'm going to spend another couple of weeks maybe playing on it continuously and then obviously i'll do a review of the unit and let everyone know how i feel but yeah i'd love to know what you think have you got one has yours arrived what do you think of it do you think the points that i've made are valid um, do you disagree? Uh, you know, let me know in the comments, guys. And I would absolutely appreciate it if you could give the video a like if you liked it. Um, maybe even share it on your social medias. But as always, guys, take care.